Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So this is another video from the Strivers A to Z DSA course. Just in case you are for the first time here, this is world's most in-depth course in DSA. Why do I say that? Because we are covering 456 modules. By the end of the course, you would have solved 400 plus problems in DSA. You can go over the entire internet. You can buy any of the paid courses. None of them will be teaching you DS Algo in such depth. One thing that I can give you as a guarantee from my end is, if you complete this course, you can actually clear any of the DS Algo rounds in any of the companies in any part of the world. So, till the last video, we have covered uh, the two sum problem. In this video, I'll be covering the problem sort an array of zeros, ones, and twos. What does the problem state? You'll be given an array, but the array only consists of zero, one, two, nothing else. Only these three integers, 0, 1, and 2. And your task is to sort it. I might be thinking, it's an easy problem. No, it is not. When you'll hear about the most optimal solution, your mind will be like, wow. So, what's the first solution that you'll give to the interviewer? That's definitely the brute force solution. And we know, what is that? That is to use any of the sorting algorithms. If we end up using merge sort, it will take a time complexity of n log n. And it will take a space complexity of bigo of n which is the temporary array that we use during the merge shot if you do not know merge shot i've already made a video on that you can go back and watch it obviously the interview will not be happy with n login time complexity and the extra space that you're using so he'll ask you to optimize it that's when you'll be telling the better solution so what is the better solution that comes up now something i can say is hey listen one thing i know for sure is the array contains 0 1 and 2 so what i'll be doing is i will do a single iteration and I'll keep three variables count zero count one and count two and in all of the iterations so when I reach zero it's a zero so I'll increase it by one and when I reach one I'll increase this by one when I reach two I'll increase this by one when I reach zero I'll increase this by two and eventually I will keep on going and I'll reach the end of the array once I've reached the end of the array the count zero will be containing the number of zeros the count 1 will be containing the number of 1s and the count 2 will be containing the number of 2s. In this case, the count 0 will be 5, count 1 will be 4, count 2 will be 3. So once you have done this, what you can do is very simply run a loop from 0 to 4 because we know the first 5 places will be occupied by 0 because if you are sorting an array of 0, 1 and 2, the first place will only have zeros, the next place will only have 1s and the next place will only have 2. So you will run a loop which runs five times and you will just manually overwrite the first five values to zero. Then you'll run a loop for four times and you'll manually overwrite the, the next four elements to one. Then you'll run a loop for three times and you'll manually overwrite the last three elements as two. Once you have done this, I can say that the array is sorted according to zeros at first, then ones and then twos. So what I can say is the better solution will be running a loop in order to count the zeros, ones and twos, that will be taking a bigo of n time complexity. Then we will be running a first loop, then a second loop and a third loop, which overall is actually bigo of n because the count of zero plus count of one plus count of two is equal to n. So overall, I can say the time complexity that I'll end up taking is n plus n to n. Am I using any extra space? I can say that no, I'm not using any extra space. We're just modifying the given array, which is the given task because we've been asked to sort an array. So we're modifying the given array. So by the way, this will go from zero to count zero in order to fill up the first count zero places. Once you filled up the first count zero places, the next place will start from count zero index and it will go on till count zero plus count one because till then you'll fill up. Then the next will start from count zero because these many have been filled up. So it starts from there and it goes until the end. So that's how the better solution will be looking like. Now the interviewer will be like, hey, you're taking B go of 2n, which is two iterations. I don't need two iterations. Can you further optimize this? This is when the most optimal solution will come in and this is going to blow your mind off. So let's talk about the most optimal solution and that will be using the Dutch national flag algorithm. Now across all the lectures on YouTube, I've seen something very common. People are just giving you the algorithm that viral and then the code. No one is talking about the intuition. No one is talking about the thought process. So in this video, I'll be focusing on the thought process and the intuition behind the algorithm. So make sure you watch the video till the end because one thing I can assure you is you are going to take away a lot of things when you end this particular video. So the algorithm 
we'll be using three pointers. That is where the thought process starts. Low, mid, high. And the algorithm is revolving around three rules. And the rules are very simple. It states everything from zero to low minus one will be the zeros. Everything between zero to low minus one, not low, low minus one will be zeros, which is nothing but the extreme left. And then it states everything from low, again, very important, everything from low to mid minus one, minus one should be one. Then it states high plus one, plus one to n minus one should be two. Now this is something which is extreme right. Now these are the three rules on which the algorithm is based. Now let me let me explain you all the three rules in diagram. Imagine uh, this is the zero pointer of the array. And imagine this is low minus one. So these are the indexes, hypothetical indexes. So they are filled with zeros. That's what their state. Then from the low index, which is the right next index after low minus one, till the mid minus one index, everything is filled with one. Then right after mid minus one, there's a mid index under the high index. Everything is filled with random numbers in an unsorted way, in an unsorted way. Then right after high comes high plus one till n minus one. Everything over here is filled with twos. So it's like two, two, two. So again, it's a hypothetical array where zero to low minus one is zeros. Low to mid minus one is ones. Mid to high is zero, one, twos. And high plus one to n minus one is just twos. These are the three rules on which we will be using this three pointers to sort the array. So we have understood the three rules clearly. Now let's have some observations. Can I say from this portion to this portion, the array is sorted. From this portion to this portion, the array is sorted. If I can somehow manage to sort this particular unsorted portion, then my task will be easy. So can I say, initially we are starting with an entire array. So can I say the mid, or rather I'll take the end local. Can I say the mid will be pointing here and the high will be pointing here. Why? Because the entire array is unsorted. Because the entire array is unsorted. And that is what we were looking to sort. The entire array is unsorted. And thereby I can say the low can be just put over here. Why? Because that's the starting index. And we know from zero to low minus one, everything is zero. So that is still valid. Still valid even if I put a low here because zero to like zero to low minus one is nothing. So this is still valid. The main thing that we are looking at is from mid to high, everything should be containing zero, one and two, and everything should be unsorted. That is valid. Now our algorithm will work on A of mid. You can also make it work on A of high. That is okay. But I'll try to tell you in terms of A of mid. If I tell you in terms of A of mid, you can actually write it in terms of A of high as well. So I'll try to tell you in terms of A of mid. So what can be the possible values of array of mid? It can be zero or it can be one or what is the other thing? Or it can be two. Now these are the three possible values of array of mid, right? Now let's analyze what happens if it is zero, what happens if it is one, what happens if it is two. Now we know one thing, we are taking pointers and whenever we are applying a pointer algorithm, the pointers will always move. That is, the, that is the use of pointers. So coming back to the algorithm, something to think about. We're talking about mid, we're talking about high, and this portion is what we are looking to sort. Now what is the first case? When array is set to be, the array of mid, array of mid is set to be having zero, because that is the first case. When I'm saying array of mid has a zero. So array of mid has a zero. Now if I have to ask you, how do you make sure that this zero is in a sorted order. You'll be like, hey, wait, I know one thing. The left portion is uns uh, is sorted. So the zero has to be somewhere on the left. And if I have to hypothetically think, can I say the zero will be somewhere here 
so that this still stays in a sorted order? Yes. So what I will do is, I'll say, okay, zero, can you go here? But then if I take the zero here, what will happen to one? I'll be like, wait, if I take this zero here, and if I take this one here, it's like, what will happen? So it'll be like, zero, 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 one, 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 and one. It will still be sorted. It'll still be sorted. What I did was, since it was zero, I, I just brought it to the correct place. And I know what is the correct place. It will be low. Why? Because that is where the section contains the first one. So I'll, I'll bring it to the correct place. And I know this will still be sorted. Now, can I say something? If this is sorted, if this is sorted, what is now unsorted? The element after mid plus one till high is unsorted. Because now this portion is entirely sorted because you did swap one and zeros. So they are completely sorted. Let's do the swap and then think about the other steps. So what I'll do is I'll quickly do the swap. So I've done the swap. Now, can I say this, that the mid can easily move to the next because now we are looking for this portion to be sorted. Like this portion is unsorted now because this is now sorted. So mid has moved. But now can I say one more thing? What are the first law? Zero to low minus one, everything zero. But as of now, zero to low is everything zero. So what will happen? This low will also move a step. This low will also move a step, yes. And the low pointer will be now pointing to this. So now, 0 to low minus 1 will be this. Low to mid minus 1 will be this, which is valid. So what did we do? First thing we did was very simple. We said, can you go ahead and swap A of low and A of mid so that that 0 comes into its correct order. Then I know if there is an addition of 0, if there is an addition of zero, so this range will increase, the low will increase. And since mid is, the element at mid is now at a sorted position, let's move it. Done. The first step, I know how to move the pointer. With the first step, I will be easily uh, able to move my mid pointer, right? So we are back to our initial configuration because this is the rule that we are following in order to deduce the algorithm. So now next two. What if? It was one. Let's now think. Let's go back again. What if there was a one here? Then what would have happened? Can I say it's a one? I know this was sorted. Can I say this is also sorted? Yeah, it is sorted. We don't need to do anything with that one because that one is attached right after one. So this is already sorted. So the elements that are not sorted are in this category. So just move mid because mid is sorted. So I'll not do anything. If it's a one, I will say, dude, I don't care. You can just move ahead. And that's what I will do. So the second step is also done. Let's talk about the third step. So in the third step, I'm saying, what if at the array of mid, there is two. So if there is two, where should you put two? Like logically, I know all the twos are over here and in the sorted fashion and all the zeros and ones are over here. So you can say, maybe I can put two at the end Maybe I can take two and put it somewhere in between. But think logically. Just think logically. We have to take two. And I, what am I looking for? I'm looking to make sure that this portion is sorted. So can I say something? I know this portion is sorted. What if I take this two and put it right before this? Right before this. Then what will happen? This portion will get sorted. And this will shrink to this much. I will be able to sort one more element. I'll be able to sort one more element. Can I say this? I can. So this is what I'll do. No matter if there is a zero, if there's a zero, there's a one, there's a two at this index, no matter. I will take this two and I'll say, can you go over here? So what will happen is this two will go over there and whatever is there, if, in it, if it's a zero, it will come over here. So now what will happen is if you have swapped it, now you can say this portion is sorted. Now, which portion is still unsorted? Can I say from mid to high minus one, like one lesser than high because high is now sorted. So we shrinked the writer half this time. We shrinked the writer half this time. Got it? So, so did you understand this? 
we are not moving mid. Now, in the next step, since you got a zero from here, this zero will be treated according to the first condition. I will show you that in the dryer. But as of now, can I say, what I did was very simple. I said, swap of A of mid and A of high. And then I'll say, since high is getting a correct, correct guy of two, so we can just move high one place back and it will be sorted. So these are the three rules. And I hope you've understood the entire thought process behind all these three rules. So keeping all the three rules in the mind, let's do a dry run so that the algorithm sticks to your brain. Remember one thing, whenever I do a dry run, try to visualize in terms of this particular diagram. Okay, let's do the dry run. We have a zero. What do we do in terms of zero? We swap A of low and A of mid. So zero and zero are at the same place. They get swapped and low and mid both will move. So let's quickly move both. So low will go here and mid will go here. And erase the other things. Okay, that was the next step. It's a one. So array of mid is one. So mid plus plus. You don't do anything, you just move. So mid will reach here. What is the next? It's again one. You don't do anything, you just move mid. So mid will reach here this time. So can you visualize, so can you relate this to the diagram that we did draw? Zero to low minus one, all zeros. Low to mid minus one, all ones. Mid to high, all unsorted, correct? Let's move and see if the diagram is still uh, being relatable or not. So we have a mid, it's a zero. We know what do we do in terms of zero. We take it here and we take it here. Let's do it. So it's like zero will go here and one will come here. And after that, yes, low will move one place ahead and mid will move one place ahead. Let's quickly raise this because they have moved one place ahead. That was the next job. Yes, mid is one. No need to do anything. Just move mid one place ahead. And if you have moved, erase this. What is that? Now, again, try to relate. Zero to low minus one, all zeros. Low to mid minus one, all ones. Mid to high, unsorted. Still relatable, right? What's the next? We have to, if we have to, we have to put it on the back. That was the thought process. So if there is a two, what will you do? You'll be like, okay, this two will go here. This zero will come here. Let's do this. So this two will become, I'm bad. This two will become zero and two will go here. You just swap both the places. Once you have done this, this portion is sorted. So what will happen to this high? This high will come here. Let's do this. Once you have done this, quickly raise this for... Okay, now, now we have a zero. Again, we fall back to the step one. This zero has to be here and this one has to be here. Let's quickly do this. The zero has to be here and probably I'll erase this and I'll bring the one here. If I've done this, what's the next job? We just move the mid here and we move the low here. Quite simple. I'll raise this as well. Now, can I say again, if I have to relate it, zero to low minus one, all zeros, low to mid minus one, all ones, mid to high, unsorted. Now, again, it is one. So you do not do anything. Just say we will move the pointer ahead. So let's move the pointer ahead. Where are we? We are at a two and this portion is unsorted. So this time this will go here and this will go here because if it's a two, put it at the extreme right. So you'll put it at the extreme right. So this will go here and we will get a zero here. And what will happen to this high? It will just shrink. So let's quickly shrink it. So if you shrink it, it shrinks like this. So we have a mid and high as zero, zero. If it's a zero, what will happen? Yes, it will go here. This will come here. Please do it. Zero, and this will be one. So I'll quickly raise this. So it'll be like zero, it'll be like one. Once you've done this, what will you do? You will move the low and you'll move the mid as well. So the low and mid will move. And I can quickly raise the previous occurrences of low and mid. Done. What's the next job? There is a zero. So if it's a zero, it swaps with one. So let's quickly swap it at one and done. Once you've done this, you move low and you move the mid and the mid goes here. And if I just quickly erase the last occurrence of mid and the last occurrence of low, this is how it looks like. And there's a point where you say the mid has gone past high, which means the area that you are trying to sort is the over. That's why your mid passed high. 
And if that is the case, can I say that the array is sorted? And if you carefully look around, from 0 to low minus 1, everything is 0. From low to mid minus 1, everything is 1. And from high plus 1 to last, everything is S2. And it is sorted. So we are still following the condition. I hope this diagram helped you to visualize the Dutch national flag algorithm. And it is very important to understand the thought process. Most of the videos will be like, three steps, dry run, code and done. No, this is indeed important. So it is very important to understand if there's a zero, why it is moving here and why the one is moving here. If there's a one, we are not doing anything. If there's a two, why is it moving back? All the three steps are very, very important to understand so that you can explain it to the interviewer. Also, your problem solving skills will grow if you understand these problems in very depth. So let's quickly jump into the code editor and try to code it up. Again, the problem link will be in the description. So we have two, uh, rather three pointers. So let's mark all the three pointers. We know this is uh, their starting points. And I know I'll keep on going till this is, till we have an unsorted section. And we know we are working on array of mid. If that is zero, it can be one case. Else if array of mid is one, or else it will be always two because the array only consists of zero, one, and two. If it is zero, what are we doing? We are saying array of low. Can you please swap with array of mid? And once you've done this, can you move yourself and mid ahead? In this case, I'm saying just move mid ahead. In this case, I'm saying swap array of rather mid and array of high. Once you've done this, since this two is at the back, high will shrink. Once this is done, I can say that the array, which is passed by reference, is indeed sorted now. So we can see this, and now we'll quickly go and run. Again, it's a void function. You don't have to return anything. You have to just work it on the particular given array. So we see that this is submitted. Okay, so let's go back to the iPad and discuss the time complexity. Now, we know one thing. We have to go from the mid and till the high and make sure the unsorted section is sorted. And initially the mid was here, if you remember, and the high was here. So there's an entire length of n that you have to sort. That is something which we know. And we know at every step, we perform either this, either this, or either this. So if we perform this, the mid increases by one. So it's like on one iteration that you're doing. So you are shrinking the mid onto the right. So that's like plus one iteration. If you do this, if you do this, it is still shrinking the mid which is like plus one iteration. But if you're doing this step, the mid is staying where it is. That is the high shrinking. And the high shrinking by this section, how does it matter? Because at the end of the day, if you're moving the mid by onto the right, one of the elements will be sorted. And if you're moving the high to the left, again, one of the elements will be sorted. So in each of the three steps, in each of the three steps, you are actually sorting one element. So at the end of the day, Overall, if at every step you are sorting one element and all the elements and all the elements were unsorted, can I say at the end of the day, you'll end up sorting n elements by taking n, n cases, like n, those cases. That's why the time complexity is big of n, a single iteration. And the space complexity is big of one. Just in case you did not understand the time complexity, what I usually did in my initial years was take, an, take this particular array, and whenever I'm moving, whenever I'm doing an iteration, I count plus one, I count plus one, I count plus one. And then I can visualize how many iterations were done by using this particular example. And then I can relate why it is B go off and please do dry runs, please count one iteration, please count one iteration. That will help you to uh, analyze the time complexity in a much, much better way. So coming back to the sheet, I can mark this as done. And I hope you've understood the thought process and the intuition behind the Dutch national flag algorithm. I know the algorithm is easy, but you have to understand the thought process, right? So if you've understood everything to continue our tradition, please do comment understood so that I understand that my effort was worth it because I really did put a lot of time onto this video. And if you're new to our channel, please, please do consider subscribing. It's 2, 8 a.m. in the night and I have an office tomorrow. So please do consider subscribing because that does motivate me to make such kind of videos late in the night. And yeah, if you haven't followed me on Instagram, LinkedIn and Twitter, the links will be in the description. With this, let's wrap up this video and made it up for the video. Till then, bye-bye, take care.